This is a video of me doing some cast down repair on an 80 year old bandsaw. I bought the bandsaw off Craigslist. Um, it's got some problems and I'm taking it apart to replace the bearings and stuff. And while taking it apart, I found that there's a damage in the casting. You can see where somebody tried to braze the brake in the cast iron. Who knows when this was actually done. It could have been 60 years ago. Hopefully my fix lasts as long as this one did. My dogs have been running around out in the pasture for the past hour. And right when I start using this grinder, they decide to show up and hang up by my legs. I'm using a die grinder and a carbide burr to get out the old crazy material. The shavings go everywhere and I probably should have chosen a different shirt to wear that day. Here you can see how the two items are supposed to fit together. I figured the best way to make sure it works after I weld it is to bolt it to the shroud and then weld it up while it's attached to the shroud. There's a pretty good gap there between the two pieces. And considering this is my first time to do some real cast iron repair, I'm feeling kind of nervous. I picked up some Nomacast welding rods from our local TSC. I searched high and low on the Hobart website looking for some welding procedures for these rods but never found them. So I did the next best thing. I searched welding forums for threads about these kind of rods. 20 year old old blue is still working here. Supposedly these Nomacast rods don't require any preheat, but I figured it wouldn't hurt just to do some preheat anyway. There's also nothing written about having to paint the weld, but I figured that was a good idea. So far, so good, nothing has exploded or anything like that. So I've got what you could call the root of the weld welded up, so things are looking good. I don't know if it's my skills or my welder or just the rods, but I needed to crank up the amps to get the rods not to stick, but then once I had to run them, they seemed to be running too hot. Maybe a more modern welder with arc force and hot starts would help this out. It's also helpful to have the ground clamp actually hooked up to your workpiece. I think all the lights flickering in the shadows moving look really cool in this shot. Because I needed to turn the amps up higher to get it to start, but then it seemed to run really hot, I had to do lots of small welds. Here's what it looks like right after welding. Kind of a mess. A little arc strike mark too where it shouldn't be. A lot of the cast iron welding procedures I've read about said to put the item in the sand and let it cool off. I didn't have a giant bucket of sand but I figured wrapping it in this leather jacket would help. And now the test to see if my repair actually worked. Good enough for me. You know what they say, do your best and grind the rest. I found it odd that this Nomacast filler material threw off sparks. A little sanding to hide those arc strikes. I've heard that a cast iron weld that doesn't crack is a good weld. So, so far this is a good weld. It's 
kind of ugly uh, for a first try. It's not too bad. Thanks for watching. Please hit that subscribe button. Have a great day.